After the admittedly very good news that we got on Thursday that the weapon balance in the TTK of Battlefield 5 is basically being reverted to the values that we saw with update 5.0, we actually got more good news on Friday evening from community manager Jeff Braddock. Tank body customization has been confirmed for update 6.2 and Braddock released a community broadcast that gave us a better look at what we can expect from the feature and from where I'm standing it looks like a pretty good system that's about to be introduced and as a gesture from DICE because well it took so long to get here we are getting a free epic dressing for the Sherman tank more about that in a minute but first of all let's get you the basic information let's give you a rundown on tank body customization it's going to arrive in the your company menu when update 6.2 launches on March 4th that's next week so really not too long to wait for the update and there you're going to be able to find it within the customized section of each tank in the menu Braddock confirmed last night that every tank in the game will be getting support for body customization which is pretty awesome to be honest this means that those European theater tanks that lots of us haven't really been using because the Pacific Theatre has been highlighted so much over the last few months, they're going to be getting the same treatment as the Pacific tanks. There's going to be plenty of options to change up the look of all of the tanks in Battlefield 5. Now, in addition to the paint job option that is already active in Battlefield 5 and has been the only way that we have been able to customise our tanks visually for the last 15 or 16 months, Body customization is going to add two new areas to that list. You're going to get turret options and chassis options. These two areas can be dressed in a variety of different items, some of which you can see on the screen right now. These are screenshots that Braddock put in his community broadcast. You're going to be able to mix and match different styles as well on the turret and the chassis to create the look that you want for each tank and then you can combine that with a paint job option and you can change up the general color or the camo of the tank too. So for players that were hoping for some kind of pick and choose system where you could drag different objects onto the tank and place them wherever you want to, that's not happening and personally I didn't believe that was really going to be the case anyway but I have seen some people saying that they expected more from this new system and I'm going to reply by saying that we were never told what to expect beyond it's coming soon for tank body customization. So some of the expectations that other people had, they're based on pretty much nothing. And it's come from their own imagination, essentially. And Braddock made a really good point on Reddit, actually, that when adding a feature like this, the team that's adding stuff, they're putting it on the overall structure of the vehicle. And because Battlefield 5 was never built to support a freeform creation system for anything in the game, the team then had to make sure that each item placed onto each tank interacts properly with the vehicle. When it's moving around, if things need to be properly animated so it doesn't look bad. And also they have to make sure that items don't restrict the view of the driver or the passengers. So there's lots more going into this than just, I wanted a freeform system and this isn't good enough. So in my book, all of those are pretty valid reasons for not having a freeform system. So these two added areas for body customization, the turret and the chassis, they're going to have items added in a similar way to soldier outfits. So you're going to see common, uncommon, rare and epic items that you can apply. At launch, so when update 6.2 goes live in the game, there will be 37 different customization pieces in your company that you can unlock immediately using company coin which is brilliant news. Lots of players feared that DICE would lock tank body customization behind Boyne's only purchases, but those fears haven't been realized. Common, uncommon, and rare items, they will be available for company coin, and only the epic items, they will be locked behind Boyne. So that's similar to soldier outfits and weapon skins. Again, some people don't agree with this practice, cosmetics being locked behind real money purchases, in a full price $60 game but honestly this is the gaming world that we live in now so I really don't expect that to change. We've had the argument with DICE already when they first introduced Boins and they first introduced some of those more wacky cosmetics and things didn't change so I really don't see it changing here 
with tank body customization. At least we're not seeing pay to win mechanics added to Battlefield 5. It is only cosmetics here. These 37 cosmetic customization items, they're spread across all of the tanks in the game and more will be added moving forwards via the armory. And those will all be of different rarity types. So most of them will be available with company coin, the common ones, the uncommon ones and the rare ones. And then the epic ones, they will be available for points. Now, speaking of the epic items, I did mention at the beginning of the video that there was a free epic dressing for the Sherman. DICE is going to be giving every player of Battlefield 5 that logs in the coming soon dressing for the Sherman tank. That was the one that was part of the Chapter 6 Solomon Islands trailer, the one that some people got really mad at because they thought DICE was mocking them. Turns out, as with most cases with these things, that it was just a meme and it was a nice nod towards the feature actually coming soon and now this skin is free for everyone. So you can kit out your Sherman in a nice looking outfit, which is pretty cool. As I said, you simply get this by logging into Battlefield 5 once update 6.2 launches on Wednesday next week. That's March the 4th. And then you've got until March 24th to claim it. So if you don't log in on March 4th, you've got until the 24th to get your hands on it. And then another skin that is sort of already active in Battlefield 5, the last Tiger skin. That's the one that you get for completing one of the campaign missions for the Tiger tank. That's going to move from just being a single customization option, and it's going to be transformed into three different parts for the turret, the chassis, and the paint job underneath. There will also be factory options for all of the tanks in the game. That's going to remove all the customization completely, and it will just give you the default look of the tank if that's what you want to go for. But on top of that, tank body customization isn't finished, so the system's not just going to go live and then never be updated. There is something else. Braddock added a short line to the end of the broadcast that alludes to a further element of the system that will be landing in the near future. You know that tank that's been dubbed the salad tank, the one that's got all the leaves over it? Well, if you imagine that, but when you load into a different map, the foliage on the tank changes colour to match the colour palette and the foliage on that map. So basically adaptive camo for your tank. That won't be active at the launch of 6.2, but it does seem that DICE is trying to bring that into the game in the near future, which does sound pretty cool, I have to admit. With this new feature being delivered alongside the almost completely reverted weapon balance and TTK in update 6.2, that brings Battlefield 5 closer, I think, to being the game that the community really wants it to be. Certainly, to me, with these features coming to the game, it looks like a better game at any rate. Of course, we haven't tested the weapon balance yet, and we haven't tested the tank body customization, so we don't know if it works 100%. And that's kind of a thing you have to have in your head with Battlefield 5, that sometimes these things don't work correctly, even with all the testing in the world. But these features coming to the game, that can only be a good thing, because they are things that the community has been asking for. Now, I don't want to be one of those people that just kind of sweeps these changes to one side and highlights even more issues, but I do think it is important to remind DICE that there are still other issues that need to be resolved with Battlefield 5. And despite all the small little bugs that sometimes get in the way, I think we're now down to three main issues with Battlefield 5. The lack of anti-cheat, fixes for the team balance that the game seems to have, and improvements to the community games feature. A robust proactive anti-cheat, that is 100% needed for PC servers since the cheating problem just isn't going away in Battlefield 5. If DICE can improve the admin options of their relatively bare bones community game system at the moment, then community servers would actually become a much cleaner environment because admins can kick or ban players permanently rather than just temporarily until the server goes away. The community could essentially self-regulate that environment, which is what actually happened most of the time in the Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 days. But because DICE chose a mainly first-party route for Battlefield 5, where they are hosting the servers, they need to provide a first-party anti-cheat solution for official servers. That, to me, has to be number one priority for DICE moving forwards. And then the team balancer. If DICE can actually fix that system so 
that it does balance servers in between rounds or maybe it moves players at the start of rounds to eliminate teams having different player numbers than each other, then that will massively improve the gameplay experience in Battlefield 5, no question. Balanced teams create more engaging matches. Right now, I have to server hop after about two or three rounds to find another server to play on because things just get more and more unbalanced the more rounds are played. That's not a good experience because the player is having to do the work that the game should be doing for them. So those three issues, if DICE can focus on those after update 6.2 and they can nail those things, then I think Battlefield 5 is technically in a really good position. Even if you don't like the way that the art style goes and you don't like gas masks or you don't like goggles on your soldiers and you want more authentic customization, forget all of that. The way the game plays, if they can nail the anti-cheat, if they can get the balancer right, and they can provide more community tools, Battlefield 5 will be in a great place for 2020. But there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comment section, and leave me a rating as well. It is much appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next one.